Hello everyone, and welcome to the Plagiarism Workshop brought to you by Santa Monica College Library. My name is Bren Antrim. I'm one of the librarians here at SMC. And today we're going to be going through what plagiarism is, how to avoid it, some consequences if you don't avoid it, and various um, websites that you can visit to help you make determinations about it. So right off the bat, what is plagiarism? Plagiarism, plagiarizing and plagiarism. This can be really confusing for people because as a researcher, you go out and you gather information from other people's sources and then you assimilate it, you find new ideas through it, you present it in your paper and you come to conclusions. The presenting it in your paper part can be a problem. Plagiarism is the practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and presenting them as if they were yours. Um, something you really, really want to avoid. Why should you avoid it? Personal reasons, also professional reasons, also legal reasons. It's an ethical issue and it compromises your integrity. Um, it can ruin your reputation as a researcher as you go forward. It breaks the Santa Monica College Honor Code, and this can lead to either a failure of the paper or even the class, and if it happens relatively often, it can get you expelled from the college. And finally, it takes credit or profit, even, away from the original creator, and that is illegal. So if it's an egregious plagiarism, or multiple plagiarisms, you can actually have legal action taken against you for doing so. So you want to avoid it, if at all possible. I mentioned the Santa Monica College Honor Code. Um, if you haven't read it yet, I recommend it. Oftentimes instructors will require you to um, read through the Honor Code and sign off that you have read it as part of your syllabus. SMC was the first California Community College to formally adopt an Honor Code. It's considered that important to us. And the general principles guiding both the Honor Code and the Honor Council include honesty, integrity, social responsibility, respect and civility. And plagiarism goes to the heart of the first three. So it's very um, sort of woven into what the honor code represents. Um, the honesty part is the refusal to deceive or steal. Um, plagiarism is stealing someone else's work. Integrity means that you can trust what a person does um, and that they are being ethical in their conduct and social responsibility is adherence to the institution policies and our policy at the college is to avoid plagiarism so how do people know if you plagiarize well um we use turnitin at smc and you can actually run your paper through turnitin um, to catch any accidental plagiarism that happens also, if you're in a writing class and you're writing essays, for example, your instructors are experts and they recognize your style and they can tell when wording or sentence construction or idea presentation just is not in your voice and they will question you about this. It's part of their job. So what if you're accused of plagiarism and you're not guilty? Um, well, you do have due process and you can appeal that. Um, that is what the um, information here is about, and it allows you to go to the instructor, go to the chair, go to the ombudsperson, who is the neutral body between faculty and students, and there are appeal presentations um, that are actually listed through the Academic Senate, and that's linked at the bottom of this page. Um, the procedures for a hearing are also found at the SMC Honor Council Hearing Board's website. Um, and if for any reason this link doesn't work, because with the website redesign, um, sometimes the links are a little wonky, Google SMC Honor Council Hearing Board and you'll get there. Further information on what exactly plagiarism is um, are found at both plagiarism.org and student lingo and student lingo is a resource from smc that walks you through various um, lessons and um, role playing and various things that help you figure out um, whether some something is or is not plagiarism 
Now, plagiarism is a really broad term, and there are a lot of different kinds of plagiarism within that. So um, I'm going to move my little window over here for just a second so you can see all of these. Some of them are severe, some of them not so severe. So the types of plagiarism are verbal, patchwork, paraphrasing, global, and self. And what that means is right over here on the right, Global plagiarism is literally taking a chunk of somebody else's work and sticking it in your essay or your speech as if it was yours. And that is severe plagiarism. That's the worst kind of plagiarism. Then there's paraphrasing plagiarism. And this is where it gets sticky for a lot of students. Um, when you rephrase someone else's ideas and you don't put that little in-text parentheses citation at the end of that paraphrasing, then you're actually plagiarizing. So just make sure you use your in-text citations, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Verbatim plagiarism is taking part of, like a little part, a few sentences, and sticking that directly into your essay without even trying to, to change that. Also serious. Mosaic plagiarism is that on a bigger scale. That's when you get text and ideas from various sources and you don't put any citation for any of them, and you use that in your paper or speech. This is really hard to avoid for a lot of people. Um, we live in a society now where we're all building off of each other's work, um, whether that's on TikTok or whether it's on Instagram. Um, in social media, we tend to share memes. We tend to um, take various ideas and create something new in ours with it, except that new in ours still contains elements that belong to other people. And in academic work, that is plagiarism. That's not free use for everybody. And then on the less serious note, but still plagiarism, there is self-plagiarism. And these usually ha happen accidentally, quite honestly. But sometimes you reuse something that you used previously in your speech or in your paper. Or um, sometimes you give part of a citation, but not enough of a citation for the person reading your paper to be able to determine where you got that information. And that's the purpose of citation, is so that whoever's reading your paper, a teacher, another scholar, whoever it might be, can backtrack and see where those ideas came from and read more about it. So these are things that you need to take a look at. I'm afraid some of you may have relaxed too much and didn't actually write your own papers. In fact, I believe a certain few of you took almost everything right off the internet. Damn it. Worried you might be him? Then you should definitely keep watching. Hi, I'm Jessica from Scribber, here to help you achieve your academic goals. Plagiarism is when you use someone else's words or ideas without crediting the source and pass it as your own. It's okay to use others' words and ideas, but you have to cite them. Committing plagiarism might save you time for a short while, but it comes at a high price. Depending on your institution's rules and the type of plagiarism, you might fail your course or even get suspended or expelled from your university. And no one wants that, right? Let's talk about five types of plagiarism you might encounter. <coughs> Although they differ in severity, it's still not acceptable to commit any kind of plagiarism. And plagiarism checkers like Turnitin can detect all of them very easily. Verbatim plagiarism, also known as copy and paste plagiarism, as its name suggests, is when you directly copy and paste text from a source without citing the author. If you want to use an author's exact words, you need to pull the original source by putting it in quotation marks and include an in-text citation. Check out our video on how to quote. Imagine a patchwork. You take different pieces of cloth and make it into a whole. That's exactly what patchwork or mosaic plagiarism is. You copy phrases and ideas from different sources and put them together to create a new text. In order to piece the different texts together nicely, this kind of plagiarism often includes some paraphrasing. It also requires a little more effort than the rest. So if you're already putting in the effort anyways, might as well completely avoid it. If you need a little help on paraphrasing, I got you. Click this video here. Paraphrasing plagiarism is the most common type of plagiarism, so pay extra attention. It's completely okay to paraphrase, but just because you wrote it in your own words doesn't make the idea yours. 
So remember to give credit and cite the original source. Global plagiarism is when you take someone else's work entirely and use it as your own. That includes if you find a text online and submit it as your own, but also if you get someone to write your essay for you, like her. But this is the exact same paper, word for word, that you can buy for $15 on termpaper.com. It even has the same title and footnotes. Maybe they copied my paper. This is one of the most serious type of plagiarism, as it involves deliberately and directly lying about the authorship of a work. So don't even think about it. You can also commit plagiarism by reusing the work you previously submitted. This is called self-plagiarism. So no turning in a paper you've already submitted for another class or recycling ideas developed from previous assignments. Just because it's your own work, it still counts as academic dishonesty because you've already gotten credit for the work. Woohoo! Now you're ready to move on to how to avoid plagiarism. Click this video here. But before you go, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. I'll see you there. little glimpse into my life there. <clears throat> so, how do you avoid it? Let me scooch this over to the side again. If we were in a classroom in person, I would be walking back and forth in front of you at this point. So you avoid plagiarism by first understanding what it is, then taking steps to avoid it. And those steps include keep track of where you got your information. Cite your sources properly, both in text, in parentheses, and in your works cited or reference listing. Those two are connected. Always cite a quote or paraphrase. Present your own ideas. Don't just rely on other people's. And use plagiarism checkers. Hi, I'm Jessica from Scribber, here to help you achieve your academic goals. Pretty relatable, huh? So you know what plagiarism is. Oops. Hmm. Let's try that again. I had a small outage. My router burped. Hi, I'm Jessica okay. from Scribber, here to help you achieve your academic goals. Pretty relatable, huh? So you know what plagiarism is. You also know the different types of plagiarism as well as the consequences. Then buckle up. In this video, I'll show you how to avoid plagiarism in three easy steps. But just in case you don't, no worries. Check out this video first. I'll wait. Step one, keep track of your sources. Sometimes you just simply forget where an idea is from. We get it. We're only human. That's why keeping track of the sources you use along your research is a great way to make sure that nothing slips through the cracks. We recommend compiling a list of citations as you are taking notes. This also allows you to easily go back and check where you found a phrase or idea to use in your paper. Step 2. Quote and paraphrase. When writing a paper, if you want to share an idea or a piece of information from a source, you must either paraphrase or quote the original text. To quote a text, enclose the quote in double quotation marks and include an in-text or footnote citation according to the citation style you're using. To paraphrase, you need to use your own words to explain an idea. You also need to include either an in-text citation or footnote citation. Check out these two videos to become an expert on quoting and paraphrasing. Step 3. Use a plagiarism checker. Most universities use plagiarism checkers like Turnitin to detect plagiarism in student papers. If you twitch upon hearing that name, you know what I'm talking about. Using a plagiarism checker before turning in your paper will help you to detect accidental plagiarism and understand plagiarism better. This way, you can make sure it's plagiarism free. Speaking of which, Scribber's plagiarism checker uses a similar scholarly publication database as most unis and helped over 100,000 students. So let us help you out too. It's linked below. Oh, and when you're browsing out there, be careful with using free plagiarism checkers. They often only compare your text to works on the internet, and some would even add your paper to a database. If you follow these steps, don't you worry about a thing. Your paper will be plagiarism-free. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video.
So, you're doing your best to avoid plagiarism. How do you decide what to cite and what not to cite when it feels like everything that goes into your paper is something that you write about in someone else's work? Well, always cite if you're quoting something, when you're taking the exact words out of someone else's text and using it in yours. Cite when you're taking a direct idea or opinion from a text, or even if you're interviewing someone and you get it in the conversation. If you're paraphrasing, putting someone else's ideas in your own words and not adding your in input into it, put a citation. When you're condensing a lot of information, say you read this whole page and it came out to basically three lines of paraphrased text that you want to add to your essay, put that citation. And don't forget, it's not just words, it's not just text that you need to cite. If you use a chart, a graph, an embedded image or video, you're going to need to put a citation for that as well. Because again, it's not yours. And you want to give credit where credit is due. But you don't have to cite absolutely everything. If something is a well-known fact or a common knowledge, what everybody knows, then you don't have to cite that. If you get it from someone specifically, you do. But if it's just some of the sort of general zeitgeist everybody in the community knows, that there's a big discussion going on about COVID-19 vaccine right now. You don't need to put a citation for that because it's literally pervasive. Everyone has the same conversation ongoing. You also don't need to cite your own ideas. Okay, um, Just don't reuse your ideas from a previous paper. And when in doubt, cite. Finally, never, ever use somebody else's paper, whether a friend gives it to you whether you buy it or whether you get it off the internet, um, that is global plagiarism. And that's the most severe type of plagiarism. Finally, plagiarism is not just for papers when we're talking about this. It could be a speech. Um, it could be a song. It could be a video. It could be a tweet. It could be an image from Instagram. It could be an embedded video from TikTok. It can also be a problem when you're doing a PowerPoint presentation, and Turnitin does have a feature to check for plagiarism in PowerPoint presentations. If you have a PowerPoint that goes along with your speech, make sure that you include the citations in your list of works cited, references, or bibliography for that. And you can actually, as you'll probably notice for ours, you can cite the sources right here on your slides as you go. You can also just put them in footnotes or at the end in a list of works cited, references, or bibliography, depending on what your instructor requires. There is a plagiarism in PowerPoint presentations video linked here. I'm not going to show that one, but it is available to you if you would like to click through and, and watch it. Now, there's a lot of talk about open education resources, OERs, um, and Creative Commons. And Creative Commons is the group that um, sort of looks at copyleft or open copyright for people. What a Creative Co Commons license is on something is these are creators who want their work to be shared. And depending on the license, it could be shared as it is with no changes. It could be shared with changes by whoever is sharing it. Um, or it could be taken into pieces and used in other works. And these are all allowed under different Creative Commons licenses. Um, these licenses have been issued for nearly 20 years, so it is growing and it's out there. Um, the creator is giving you permission to use their work beyond copyright law, um, but that is not the same as public domain, which we're going to talk about in a second, and that's not about plagiarism. All citation and plagiarism rules still apply even if you were using open education resources with Creative Commons licenses. You are still using someone else's work even if they're giving you permission. So if you cite something, if you take someone else's text, even if it's from an open education resource, even if it has a Creative Commons license like this video itself has, you still want to give credit to where you got that information by citing it. Now, I mentioned public domain, um, and public domain, again, goes into that copyright versus plagiarism question. Public domain are really old works, um, classic works. 
uh, Gilgamesh, for example. Um, if there's a new translation of Gilgamesh, that new translation is under copyright by the translator. But if you're just looking for the epic poem Gilgamesh, you can find it anywhere pretty much, and there's no copyright protection. However, uh, most of the content on the internet is not public domain. It's new. It's not old. And there are exceptions, like works from the federal government, that never go into public domain. So you have to be careful with this, and if you're unsure, ask your instructor or ask your librarian. What it means for you is, much like uh, Creative Commons licensed work, you can copy and distribute it. But again, like Creative um, Commons licensed work, you still have to cite it, because copyright and plagiarism are two different things. Okay? You must still follow all of the rules about attributing the work to the author and making sure that you cite any work that is not yours. So here's the best practice overall in the research process. First, you plan your paper. You consult with your instructor. You ask a librarian. You determine your topic. You take notes. Um, you start to gather your resources. Then you analyze and evaluate the sources that you have found. Is it credible? Um, if it's news, for example, can you verify it with multiple sources? Does it come from a scholarly journal article? You can use fact-checking sites. And there is a fake news workshop um, also on the SMC Library YouTube channel that talks in depth about this. And then after you've decided that your sources are good, um, then you write your paper, make sure that you cite, and you paraphrase properly. So now we're talking about citation. How do I know how to do those in-text parentheticals and that final work cited at the end or these footnote um, notes of where my sources came from? There are some places for you to look. Um, at Santa Monica College homepage, we have citation style guidelines linked from the library homepage. We also have a number of research guides. Some of them are topical, some of them are by discipline, and one of them is specifically about citation. Okay. And there are a couple of really good OWLs, or online writing labs, where you can also check. Um, one is the Purdue um, University OWL, and the other is the Excelsior College OWL, and they're both linked here. Um, so you have the option to check those out um, as well. We also have a Library One class, which is a one-unit, eight-week UC and CSU transferable class that goes in depth on both the resources that Santa Monica College offers and how to cite them correctly using the Modern Language Association or MLA citation style. If you need more help when you're doing your citing, we also have sample citations on those um, live guides, those resource guides. So let me move me out of the way. And this is what the Introduction to Research Library Guide looks like. And under it, when you click on, for example, MLA style, there are sample citations for how you deal with different types of resources, different types of authors, different ways of delivery, even different types of websites that they come from. The Excelsior and Purdue OWLs are also very good for this. So where can you find more information about plagiarism? Under the Introduction to Research Guide that we just looked at, there is a link for academic integrity and plagiarism. The Excelsior Online Writing Lab has an Avoiding Plagiarism module, and the Purdue Online Writing Lab also has a plagiarism module. And like anything, the more familiar you are with it, the more easily you can recognize it in your own work and avoid accidental plagiarism. And finally, um, some more videos. Again, I'm not going to show you these, but they are available for you to check out on your own. They're um, in Student Lingo, which we mentioned earlier. There is an Academic Integrity Do's and Don'ts Overview and Scenarios. And on YouTube, How to Avoid Plagiarism in Five Easy Steps. Throughout the research process, moving me over just a little bit, Again, I'm walking back and forth in front of the classroom virtually. If you take a look at the library homepage, in the middle, underneath the databases, is Ask a Librarian. 
This is 24-7 research assistance help. Um, during the times when our library would normally be open, so Monday through Thursday, Friday, a little bit on Saturday, you'll be talking to an SMC librarian. But even if it's not during that time, say it's, it's 10 o'clock at night on a Saturday and you desperately need help because you're working on your speech or your paper, you can go to Ask a Librarian and it will connect you with a college or university librarian from the International Consortium of which we're a part. So when you go to Ask a Librarian, you will always talk to a college librarian and they can help you. If you are getting extra credit for this particular workshop, um, you'll need to give your instructor a code word and the code word for you to get that extra credit is citation. And I will leave you with this. As you go forward in your attempts to ensure that your work is your own, is credible, is trustworthy, and does not accidentally use the work of others without giving them credit, there is a plagiarism knowledge quiz that you can take, and that is linked here if you would like to do that. I will come back to this, but I want to show you what it looks like when you have an end work cited. These are all of the sources that were used in creating this PowerPoint. And if you create a PowerPoint using the work of other people, this sort of information should follow your PowerPoint. I wish you the very best, and if you have any questions, please ask a librarian.